Hi there. In this video, I'll be sharing a tip you can use in creating an auto scroll effect on your sliders using the nav nestable element in Bricks Builder. Actually, there are two ways to achieve this. The first method requires you to play around with the sliders speed and interval properties in order to achieve the illusion of infinite continuous scrolling. It's not perfect, but can be helpful in a pinch. So all I have here is a simple slider, the slider nestable element, which contains one slide that populates the rest of the other slides because I have it connected to a query loop. Now that query loop for this example is connected to a product custom post type, which ends up generating all of these other images. And the images are basically an image element wrapped with a div. Now for the slider nestable itself, I've cleared out all the options except for these two options, the spacing and items to show, which I've set to two rem and four respectively. You find them here under options. Now, in order for us to accomplish the auto scrolling effect, we have to take three main options into consideration. The speed in milliseconds, the interval of the autoplay effect, and finally the easing. Now, the trick here is to ensure that the speed and the interval are exactly the same value. So if, for example, I were to set the speed of the animation to something like 3000, which is three seconds, and we set the interval to three seconds as well, it should ideally send a message to the slider to ensure that every animation takes three seconds. And if it takes three seconds, it means every animation should also be repeated three seconds later. The resulting effect should be this continual scrolling effect, which unfortunately is not happening because the easing option by default is set to ease. And so you will notice we have this effect where the slides speed up to a certain point and then slow way down as the animation approaches its end. Unfortunately, we do not have an option to control easing on the Bricks interface, which brings us to the custom options. But before I switch to custom options, I'm going to save this and then switch to custom options. Now, when I save at the front end, our slider should then reflect the initial changes we made. And a part of those changes are the settings that we have here under the data supplied property. Now, these settings are represented in JSON format, but it's something that we, we're going to tidy up before we implement it. So what I'm going to do is copy these settings as we see them here. Now, in order to clean it up, First, I'll switch to this tool here and paste my settings. What I want to do is replace this HTML entity with the actual double quotes. So I'll click replace text and now we should have these double quotes, which are easier to read. Now I'm going to copy this and also put it through another tool, which should help us format our JSON content. So I'll paste this here as well. It simply lays them out in this list that is easier to read and understand. So now I'll copy this and paste it in the custom options field. One thing I'm going to do is get rid of the breakpoints options. It's one of the bugs with the way Bricks handles slider settings. So it automatically stores some of these settings in the largest breakpoint which should not be the case because this is the default breakpoint. So I'm going to clear out the breakpoints. Make sure to remove the last comma and save. So if this works, we should be back exactly where we started, except for the added advantage of being able to adjust these settings directly from the Bricks interface. Now, we, you can see our settings already reflected here, like the speed, the interval, and a bunch of other default settings that come with the slider. I'm going to come down here and add the easing property, which I'll set to linear. This will ensure that the easing or the mo movement of the slides adopts a constant 
motion effect and you can find a ton of other settings in the splide documentation so among the list of options here for example you should find easing and we can see the options that are already available to us under easing so by default in bricks you have ease which caused that kind of motion but in this case we wanted to use linear so i've set it that way and you can already see the auto scrolling effect taking shape So the only thing to keep in mind about this effect is that because we've set it to 3000 milliseconds, it's going to take at least three seconds for the slide in for the sliding effects to begin. So that's just something to keep in mind. Now, if you need the slide to flow in the opposite direction, you can come up here under the direction. And it's, again, it's one of these options that are listed in the slide documentation, but you can come here and change the direction from left to right to right to left that's rtl and save this now the slides should begin to flow in the opposite direction that's just something to keep in mind when working with these things and then you can play again with these other options and see what's obtainable but that's the first way to implement this kind of auto scrolling effect for the second option we'll be using the splide auto scroll extension which as the name implies allows us to apply the auto scroll setting to our splide slider by default it doesn't come bundled with the splide slider because not everyone needs it so you can only install it when you need it now we can see the installation instructions here but they are slightly different because we have to adapt it for bricks builder now i'll come into the settings page settings and under the custom code or paste the script for the splied auto scroll extension. Next, we have to initialize that script and point it to this nestable slider. So I'm going to add a code element. And then we'll paste the JavaScript. Now, the only thing you need to modify in this snippet is the ID of the slider. This is how we point it to this particular nestable slider. So you want to select the slider element and copy the bricks ID, which is basically this value here. So if you're using an older version of bricks, you can just copy this value here. Then come in here and replace the ID value. Next execute code and render without wrapper then we'll save now we still have some options left over from the previous method but let's see how this thing works in the front end for now now when we preview we should have what looks like the auto scroll slider it's not quite obvious right now because we still have the auto scroll from the previous slider and i'll also like to get rid of this dragging effect so first things first, to ensure that we do not allow the previous settings override the auto scroll, we want to turn auto play off. So I'll set this to false and save. Now, even when we have auto play turned off, we should still see our slider running automatically. And how I know it's running automatically with the auto scroll extension is that when I hover here, you see it pauses the slider even though we have pause on hover set to false on the default slider so we'll begin by adjusting a few things here first i'd like to turn off this pause on hover effect then i'll also remove the dragging effect i think that's the first thing we'll do now so i'll come here and in the default settings Next, I'll add the auto scroll property now. You want to be mindful of the casing. And the auto scroll property, as we see in the documentation, accepts its own context. So you have auto scroll, and inside of auto scroll, it has its own individual settings, one of which is the speed. So we can come here and set the speed to 
two or let's say three, which is quicker. So the higher the number, the quicker your slide will scroll. I also want to remove that pause on hover. So, so I'm going to copy the pause on hover property here, add a comma and paste. Now it's set to false. And because it's the last option, remember to turn off, remove the last comma, then save. Now, when we play, you can see it runs and it, there's no possibility to slide or drag the, the slider. So it just runs as we would like, which is perfect. Now, one more thing, how do we change the direction of this slide? What if I wanted to flow in the opposite direction from left to right? Well, we no longer have to use this direction anymore because one of the settings here allows us to do that, which is the speed. So we want to set the speed to a negative value. So I'll say minus three. I also want it to run slower. So I'll set that to minus one as well. Now, when we preview, you can see it runs slowly and it can also take decimal numbers. So if I want it to go even slower, I can set this to minus 0 0.5 and save. Now it's much slower and behaves exactly as we would want. Never mind that it's, it might seem a little choppy on the video, but that's because of performance issues, but it should run smoothly in your browser. Feel free to post in the comments if you have any questions or need clarification. If you found this tutorial helpful, I'll encourage you click the subscribe button so you don't miss out on more nifty tutorials that I have planned. If you need help executing on a website design project or for general consultation, you can drop a message through my website or schedule a meeting. If you haven't already, check out my multi-level header menu template for Bricks Builder. It's designed to help you create a simple yet powerful header menu for your website builds quickly. The template is highly customizable with all CSS settings in one place. No more hunting around the Bricks interface. You'll get a true multi-level experience on mobile, making content easily accessible without overwhelming your users. Plus, you can replace the boring old toggle icon with something more delightful. Get the template on gumroad.com linked in the description below. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one.